Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. And now, Tider Insider TV. All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome into the fastest 30 minutes in sports television. It just flies by, Tider Insider TV. Still across the studio from TiderInsider.com's Rodney Orr. I'm WVOA 23 Sports Director Gary Harris. Let's get going. We got football off the top. For the second straight week, Alabama football has landed uh, what we believe will be an impact transfer from the portal. The portal. Last week, we were talking about former Ohio State receiver Jamison Williams, and now the Crimson Tide is going to add linebacker Henry Toa Toa from SEC rival Tennessee. Last season with the Vols, Toa Toa had a team-high 76 tackles, including 10 tackles for loss, two pass breakups, and an interception, which he returned for a touchdown against South Carolina. You see it right there. Toa Toa is 6'2", 230 pounds. Uh, add to that a uh, fact that he just really can run well from the inside linebacker position, and Alabama already in good shape at linebacker gets even stronger as they already have the likes of Christian Harris, Ryan Anderson, Chris Allen, Jalen Moody, Shane Lee, and more. Uh, let me bring uh, Rodney in here uh, to get uh, thoughts on this. Now, this note, Rod, the SEC still has not officially announced whether it's going to allow the interconference transfers to be immediately eligible. Uh, obviously, it's believed that will happen sometime soon. Clearly, Toa Toa and his family believe that, or they wouldn't be announcing their transfer to Alabama. But uh, let me ask you, what's bigger here, that Toa Toa is a proven commodity or that he is already likely familiar with this defensive scheme, having played for Derek Ainsley and, and Jeremy Pruitt at Tennessee? Well, I think it's all of the above, Gary. I think when you look at uh, Henry Toa Toa, he's a guy that came in as a true freshman a couple of years ago at Tennessee, started calling the defensive signals right off the bat. I mean, he's a guy that's a natural Mike type linebacker, a guy that signal calling comes easy to him, but you mentioned it. I mean, he played for Jeremy Pruitt. He played for Derek Ainsley there at Tennessee, both those guys from the Nick Saban defensive tree. So he has a pretty good understanding coming in. I don't think the learning curve will be that great for him uh, coming from Tennessee because he has that experience with Pruitt and Ansley. So, and you mentioned about his talent. Uh, he was a five-star type player at a Concord de la Salle out in California a couple of years ago. And, you know, Gary, you and I talked about this many times back, back then that I thought he was coming here originally, you know, and it was a late deal where he chose Tennessee, but I, I really think this is where he wanted to be all along. All right, Ronnie, uh, linebacker's already a strength for Alabama, even before Toa Toa's announcement, uh, with Christian Harris on the inside, Jalen Moody, Shane Lee, of course, obviously Allen and, and uh, Anderson on the outside. Uh, as far as the inside duo, with Harris already there, an All-American candidate, now Toa Toa, an All-American candidate, joining him. Is this the best? Is it overreaction to say this will be the best inside linebacker duo in the country? Uh, possibly next year. You know, and again, you're talking about Jalen Moody also, who's a high-quality player who be competing for uh, playing time as well. So you look at those three guys. Uh, yeah, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a better trio of guys that can play those in, inside backer spots uh, anywhere in the country. You mentioned Will Anderson on the outside with Chris Allen. You've got some young players behind them that have really turned out shining. Drew Sanders had a big spring. Uh, you know, we know about King Makuta and some of the other young players on the outside. So you look at this Alabama depth chart. We haven't even talked about those guys uh, on the inside that were freshmen, Des Moy Kennedy, uh, Deontay Lawson. Uh, Jackson Bratton, you've got really some high quality players, Gary, but now you've got just a lot of experience with some of these guys like Toa Toa, Christian Harris, and so forth. And Ronnie, real quickly, for those that would say this isn't fair to the current group of linebackers, or with Jameis Williamson coming, Williams coming in for the current group of wide receivers to bring in these players when you've got guys that have been working for an opportunity, uh, how would you respond to that? Well, I think it's really you have to look at your team. I mean, what's fair is to give your team the best opportunity to win games. Uh, you know, so I think, you know, bringing in guys like Jamison Williams who can help you from a steed, speed standpoint. He's got, you know, some experience on this level. He's been successful. Uh, Toa Toa, the same thing. I, I think you have to do what you have to do to bolster your team. And you know what? It's competition. And uh, – I think a lot of those players will eventually get their opportunities as well. You know, we're here in recruiting circles. If you're afraid of competition, don't go to Alabama because you're going to get plenty of it. Iron sharpens iron. There's no doubt about that. All right, you know, you, you, you get some in the transfer portal, and obviously there's an opportunity for players to leave your program. Defensive back Brandon Turnage uh, entered his name into the transfer portal. Uh, he signed in 2019 as a four-star prospect out of Oxford, Mississippi. Highly recruited 
uh, player, great young man. Every, you know, everybody I've talked to said he's done everything he's been asked to do. Just wasn't getting the PT. Uh, he goes into the uh, transfer portal after Alabama wraps up spring practice. I know you feel like I do, Rodney, with this guy that you just wish for him the best because mm -hmm. he's a quality person and a quality football player. Just wasn't getting uh, – what he felt like he needed here from Alabama, so he's looking to move on. Yeah, I mean, a very fluid athlete coming out of Oxford, Mississippi a few years ago, Gary, and I know that he was really highly recruited, not sure where he'll go. I know Ole Miss would really love to have him, but he's a, he's a high-quality athlete. He's going to have success no matter where he goes. And uh, we do hope he, uh, you know, winds up in a good spot for him because, again, I think he's a quality football player. Just, you know, listen. Numbers. Alabama's got a lot of them in that secondary. And real quickly, Ronald Williams, who had entered the portal, another former Alabama DB, announcing today that he will attend uh, uh, Michigan State. Of course, a lot of familiarity there with uh, the head coach at Michigan State, former secondary coach uh, at, at Alabama, and Mel Tucker. Yeah, I, I think that's a great spot for him, Gary. And I think uh, Mel Tucker does a fantastic job with secondary players. You know, Mel Tucker, as you mentioned, was here, what, on the 2017 National Championship team, has a, has a long uh, tradition or, or history, I should say, with Nick Saban, long track record with Nick Saban. So I think that's going to work out really well for Ronald Williams. Yeah, and I think Tucker was actually recruiting um, – Williams when he was at Hutchinson Community College for Alabama and then for Georgia. So, you know, that, that should work out well. All right, now it's time for Coach Talk. Alabama last week unveiled its new branding platform, The Advantage. Head football coach Nick Saban provided his thoughts on how name, image, and likeness could affect his team moving forward. Speaking with the media before the region's tradition celebrity pro-am last Wednesday, Saban said he has some concerns over how the new policy will be implemented and run. How do we manage this? How do we police it? How do we make sure that um, it's fair for everybody? I think, you know, the NCAA has always, you know, tried to keep a level playing field for everyone. Uh, so hopefully um, this is not something that, um, you know, it will be fair for everyone and everyone will have an opportunity um, to create some value for themselves and their brand. Uh, but at the same time, it won't create advantages for anyone. Coach Saban is, is the best coach in college football, maybe of all time. He's one of the smartest guys out there. Alabama's getting in front of this with the advantage, but this is one time I disagree with him. It, this isn't about fairness. This isn't going to be fair, Rodney. Uh, it's not going to be fair for particular players. It's not going to be fair for schools. Uh, depending on who you are and where you're at, you're going to get more branding opportunity than someone else. And so I appreciate where he's coming from. I do think that's the way we've been thinking for so many years. It's about fairness and equal opportunity and competitive uh, – you know, competition where it's not weighed too heavily to one school or another. But this isn't the way this is going to work out, right? I mean, this is, it's not going to be the same for every player. It's not going to be the same for every school. Yeah, I, again, I think when you're in a position such as the Alabama quarterback, Gary, uh, you know, you're going to have opportunities that a lot of other players at other places won't have, uh, you know, in other positions won't have. Uh, there's no question about that. It's, again, it's not going to be equal. There's no question about that. But he said fair. Uh, so we'll see. They'll all have opportunities to, to kind of enhance their brand. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this uh, uh, NIL goes. If this was all about competition being equal, we wouldn't be implementing this program. This is about athletes being able to make money off of their brand, and some will make more than others. But like Coach Saban said, we'll just have to see how this is implemented and how it's run. Nobody really knows for sure. Well, one of the most publicized stats among SEC fans and media is Nick Saban's record against uh, his former assistant coaches. It's 23-0. and 0. That includes 4-0 against Jimbo Fisher. One of them at Florida State, the other three at Texas A&M. Well, last week at a Houston Quarterback Club event, Fisher was asked if the best hope to beat Alabama is to wait until Coach Saban retires. Fisher's answer was basically, nope, we're going to beat his you-know-what while he's at Alabama. Don't worry. And he didn't say but. Uh, listen to Coach Saban's response, though, to what Fisher had to say. I think you'll find it funny. Uh, your friend Jimbo said yesterday that um, at some point while well, you're in Tuscaloosa, he was going to beat your butt. That wasn't the word that he used, but did you have any response for that? In golf? <laughs> <laughs> I think he, I think he meant on the football field. <laughs> well, I'm sure there will come a day, you know, but uh, is that what he's talking about? That football? He, he, 
That's great. Hey, listen, man, I don't blame Jimbo Fisher. He's at a quarterback club. What are you going to say? No, we don't expect to beat him. So I got no problem with that. At the same time, I thought I thought Saban's uh, response there was classic, Rod. Well, you know what? I can tell you, living in Texas for as many years as I did, Gary, I, I promise you, they're not paying him $75 million to say he's not going to beat Nick Saban. I mean, uh, the, when we've talked about this, actually. Texas A&M, their next step. Yeah. That's what it is. Hey, They've not, got to beat Alabama. 9-1 and one last year, finished fourth in the country. They beat Alabama last year. They're in the playoff. Who knows? Maybe they're the national champion. But it's easier said than done. Just ask all his other assistants and Jimbo. Nobody's been able to do it yet. <laughs> well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, Alabama baseball locks on a spot for the postseason conference tournament. And Crimson Tide softball puts a cap on the regular season with a pair of SEC individual honors. More on that in a preview of this week's SEC tournament coming up next right here on TITV. And as always, when we get into your phone calls, emails, and tweets, there's the phone number 205 348 WVUA. That's 348 9882. Or you can email us at the address on your screen or tweet at us using that hashtag TITV. Tider Insider TV, 21 years and still going strong. We're back after this. Alabama slugging catcher Bailey Hemphill has been, the, been named the SEC Player of the Year. It's the third time a tied player has captured the award. I thought it would have been more. Hemphill joined Charlotte Morgan, who won it back-to-back -back in 2009 and 2010. Way back in the day, Kelly Kretschmann, how she didn't win it, I have no idea, and others that have been through here. Hemphill finished with a 412 batting average and an SEC leading 567 on base percentage. Tied pitcher Montana Fouts is the conference co-pitcher of the year, sharing the award, award with Arkansas's Mary Half. Half had a good year, but Montana's incredible. 19 wins, 3 saves, and a 1.63 ERA. And welcome back to TITV. Sitting across the studio from Tider Insiders Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Alabama will host and is already hosting the SEC tournament, which got underway this afternoon at Rhodes Stadium. South Carolina won that first game, the number 12 seed. Uh, Auburn falls to the number 13 seed, South Carolina. Carolina wins it 3-1. to one. Carolina advances. Auburn is done. The Tide's first game is scheduled for Thursday. Now, Alabama softball earned the number three seed at the 2021 SEC tournament. With the top four seeds earning a first-round bye, Alabama will play in the final game on Thursday night against either Kentucky or Georgia. Those two teams square off tomorrow. In regular season play, the Tide swept Georgia, but Kentucky won the series two out of three games against Alabama, but that was in Lexington. Alabama now has home field advantage and momentum coming into this tournament. The Tide's coming off a 10-game winning streak and have a 31-4 record at home. Overall, Alabama finished 42-7 in the regular season, uh, third in the SEC, but they have the best overall record in the conference. And, Rodney, I'm going to tell you, 10 wins in a row. Montana Fouts is absolutely dominant in the circle. Jenna Johnson is back. They've overcome some injuries. They're playing at home. Uh, they got the player of the year in Hempel. They got the co-pitcher of the year in Fouts. I know Florida and Arkansas tied for the conference championship. Florida is the one seed. Arkansas is the two seed. I'm picking Alabama to win this thing. Well, I kind of thought you were headed in that direction. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, hey, listen, they started out really well. As you know, Gary hit a little slump. But uh, as you mentioned, they're playing really well right now. So they may be the hot team. Alabama had eight players earn all SEC honors. We mentioned the uh, single uh, award winners, but Alyssa Brown, Alexis Mack, Montana Fouts, Bailey Hemphill on the first team, Kaylee Town on the second team, newcomer team, Lexi Kilfoyle and Savannah Woodard, and KB Sides earned all SEC defensive team honors for right field. Alabama is rolling. And Alabama baseball will be part of this month's SEC tournament. Doesn't that sound good? It's been a while. On Sunday, the Tides game with Vanderbilt got rained out, so Alabama finishes the weekend 0-2 versus the Commodores, but because Missouri lost to Tennessee, Alabama's locked into a spot at the Hoover Met. It'll be the first time Alabama's taken part in the SEC baseball tournament since 2016. Of course, they didn't have it last year. Uh, Alabama travels to Baton Rouge uh, to face LSU this weekend. Game one is Friday night at 7 o'clock. Well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, Alabama men's tennis looks to survive in advance to the first round of the NCAA tournament. The highlights are coming up. And next, we'll be welcoming your phone calls and emails and tweets. Again, the information on your screen. Give us a call right now, 205-348-9882. We want, we want to hear from you, Tider Insider Nation. We'll be right back after this. Alabama men's tennis dropped a heartbreaker in the NCAA tournament first round, dropped a back and forth match with Oregon this past weekend out in Texas. The Tides' Jeremy Gesswinder and Alexi Nesteroff pick up a key singles win each, but uh, Alabama had the lead in this one three to two. They were on the verge of winning the match, but the final two single points uh, went to Oregon and they went at four to three. Alabama's Edson Ortiz uh, was um, Outstanding. He qualified for the NCAA as a individual. And the doubles team of Patrick Cogvalta and Ricardo Roberto will take part in the NCAA championships as a doubles team later this month. All right, welcome back into the program. It's time to go out to the phone line. And uh, we've got our pal Bill Taylor, BT, with us tonight here in Tuscaloosa. Hey, BT, how are you? 
I'm doing fine, Gary Rodney. How about y'all? Doing great. Good to hear from you, BT. Yes, sir. I wanna, Gary, I want to ask about the, uh, uh, Josh and uh, Shaq. Are they planning on coming back or what's their situation? Yeah, BT, we're waiting to hear You know the word on those two guys. My guess is, and it's strictly a guess, I haven't talked to anybody. I believe they're both going to return. I believe they wanted to get into the draft, see where they stand, uh, get their evaluations. But it is my belief, BT and Rodney, that these two young men will come back, uh, Shaq for his junior season and Primo for his sophomore season. Yeah, I would think so too, Gary. And I mean, those are two really key players as you start to look forward to next year. And, you know, I agree with you. I think that they'll make the decision to come back. BT, thank you for that phone call. Well, phone lines are open right now, 205 205- Three four eight nine eight eight two. Let's get to an email, and this one comes from Les and Hoover. Will Mechie, Bolden, and Williams uh, be the starting receivers? Les, I think that uh, that's a safe assumption. Now we'll see, but obviously Mechie's going to start. I think Jamison Williams uh, is coming in here to compete for a starting position. No guarantees, and I like Slade and Bolden in that that slot receiver position. So uh, again, I don't know for sure, Rodney, but. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if against Miami in that first game over in Atlanta, those are your three starting wide yeah, receivers. Yeah, it could very well be. Wouldn't surprise me. And and I think, too, you've got a lot of really other good young players. I mean, obviously, Xavier Williams has been around a while. You've got Treshawn Holden, who looked really good in the spring game. Obviously, uh, Jai Hall's extraordinarily talented. Tyu Jones-Bell. You've got the, you know, other freshmen uh, that are here, Ja'Cory Brooks, Christian Leary. You've got JoJo Earl coming in, who's one of the best playmakers there was in the country last year as a slot receiver so there's going to be a lot of competition all right let's get to another email this is from stan in tuscaloosa and i told Stu when we got this email i meant to pick look up these numbers and i got busy and, and didn't do it stan uh how many it's saving draft dominance yes how many players have been picked how many undrafted free agents how many have had nfl careers well i don't have the numbers in front of me but i can tell you this since nick saban's been at the university of alabama alabama has had more total draft picks and more first rounders selected than any school in the country again i don't have the numbers in front of me i apologize for that uh, as far as undrafted free agents, I don't know if I could have gotten that information anyway, but it's been a lot of them, and we've got, you know, Alabama's got more players right now in the National Football League than any school in the country, Rodney. So uh, without having the numbers in front of me, that is complete draft dominance. Yeah, yeah there's, what, over 70 now in the NFL, yeah. Gary, with teams, so, yeah. It's phenomenal. And one quick note, uh, women's golf playing down at the Baton Rouge NCAA Regional, they were washed out yesterday, and they were washed out again today. It's getting... You know, they need to be able to play tomorrow for sure, but that's the update on the Alabama women's golf team. Well, coming up on TITV, former Alabama basketball player Jasmine Walker makes a first impression that is memorable as a pro. We'll tell you about her WNBA debut coming up next. And more of your phone calls and emails and tweets. And again, phone lines are wide open at 205-348-9882. That's 205-348-9882. We'll be back with more right after this. Well, Jasmine Walker lit it up in her WNBA debut. The former Crimson Tide star had a uh, had very close to a double-double for a new team, the L.A. Sparks, over the weekend in a preseason game against Las Vegas. She had a team high 23 points, hitting seven threes. She also had nine rebounds. After the game, Walker says she felt welcome to the league. I bet. We'll see if the rest of her WNBA uh, opponents are ready for her because she looks like she's got a chance to be a star. L.A. opens the regular season Friday night against Dallas. All right, welcome back into Tider Insider TV with Rodney Orr. I'm Gary Harris. Let's jump out on the phone lines and welcome in Ridge from Birmingham. Hey, Ridge. It's Ridge, not Ridge Runner from Tennessee. It's Ridge. I, all right, Ridge, I asked him three times, but I got you. My, my Listen, mistake. I'm glad I got in, and I'm not no Shakespeare, but try to hear me out on okay. this. Coach Saban, several years ago, he, he stated what's going to happen with all this transfer of players, giving them transfers to other schools. It started when, from us, I think, when Kirby Smart stole that uh, defensive back that we paid for his education. Bruce Smith, and, yeah. And, but it's not going to be if, it's not going to be fair. What would a big center that did the blocking for uh, Luke say last last year if? Luke got all the credit, and he didn't get any credit for his success. And these players are just making it look like pro ball if you want to do away with the college spirit. It ought to be outlawed. I don't know how we got those crooks in there that are changing it, but it needs to be outlawed. And before I hang up, somebody please tell me, whatever happened to that little DB that we had several years ago named Arenas? And I'll sign up and, and eagerly listen to your comments. All right, Reg, thank you for the phone call. Ronnie, I'll let you take that about the portal. Uh, you know, 
whether you like it or you don't like it, it, it it's here and the name, image, and likeness is here and uh, all of these different things are being implemented and it's going to be up to the NCAA and the schools to make it work. Uh, I do see there potentially being some issues between players even on the same team. But, you know, again, we'll just have to, we'll just have to go with it. We'll have to evolve. Yeah, on the portal, Gary, you know, I mean, I kind of understand what, where Reg is coming from. Uh, he's a th- Reg is a throwback, so he, he doesn't really like change. And I, I, I understand, I, you know, but the thing, times have changed. Uh, you know, you're going to have uh, now with the portal, guys are going to have the opportunity to have that uh, make one transfer, Reg. It's only one in their career. They can transfer without the penalty of having to sit out. So, uh, you know, it's just kind of the way it is. And, and I'm like you. I think it's going to create a almost like a free agency, but it is what it is. Yeah, and uh... – You know, sports is constantly evolving at every level, and it's evolving in college, too. As far as Javier Arenas is concerned, you're right. He was an outstanding defensive back recruited by Mike Shula and then uh, really developed as a star under Nick Saban. Uh, Last I was aware of, he was on the staff here at the University of Alabama in a support personnel category. So uh, I'll uh, double-check on that, Reg, but I think Javier Arenas is on staff at the University of Alabama. All right, thanks for the phone calls. Thanks for the emails. We'll be back to wrap up this edition of Tider Insider TV on an overcast Tuesday evening in T-Town right after this. Well, former Alabama golfer and Tuscaloosa native Dickie Pride, man, he was in the hunt this weekend at the Regents Tradition Major Championship over at Greystone in Birmingham. Uh, just a couple back going into the final round on Sunday. He wound up falling off, shot over par in the final round, finished up 13th, but he's off to a good start. He's got eight top 25 finishes in nine Champions Tour events this season. And, uh, of course, his dad was Dick Pride, former University of Alabama golfer. Dickie Pride is a native son of Tuscaloosa and glad to see him well. Also notable from the golf tour, Tom Lovelady, former Alabama golfer, is in the field this week at the AT&T Byron Nelson out in Texas. He earned a spot by finishing in the top four of the qualifier on Monday. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Tider Insider Television. A reminder, if you missed any of the show or want to catch it again, you can tonight at 1030 here on WVUA 23 or online anytime at WVUA23.com. We're going to leave you with some highlights from last week's Mal Moore Charity Golf Tournament at North River Yacht Club. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody, and roll tide.